think we might have lost Peter. What'd you think? Our first uh, episode of the season. Yeah, it's good. What do you think, Mike? How, how did it how did it transition in your head? Uh, it transitioned very well. I thought it was really, uh, really, really interesting how, uh, you know, how we create something, uh, you know, in a role playing session, and then how how it goes through the different uh, uh, changes to, to come out with the script and everything. So I was very excited about it. Um, I really like the, you know. The characters, the the uh, the actors playing those role playing, uh, you know, playing those different characters are really, really, really good. So it was very, uh, really, really nice to see them bring that to life. Cool. Were there any spots in the session that you did that you were surprised at how they turned out in the film uh, version? Um. Yeah. I mean, I, when I created the when I created the characters for. Uh, Bongo, Billy, and Billy the Kid. Um, uh, I had I had created that kind of by myself, and uh, was just kind of uh, wondering how that would turn out with kids and actors and everything. But I thought it turned out really well. I mean, they uh, they pretty much uh, they pretty much uh, you know kind of brought that to life the way I was thinking that that they would. It was very uh, it was very cool the way that all happened, uh, and. Uh, you know, I think you know that 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 part was really interesting to me. Um, I was that was the part I was kind of wanting to see most of all about how's that going to work out, how's it going to happen, and all and all of that. Um, but yeah, everything was was really really good. I mean, as far as my uh, my from beginning to end, as far as what I what we created and when what was ultimately shot, I like uh, I like a lot of the. Uh, the different changes they did in the script uh, or for, to make into the script to uh, do some of those pretty cool uh, pretty cool uh, gags and things were really interesting. <laughs> well, you do have to distill it down. You know, it's a, it's a RPG and there's a lot of hubbub and people, you know, tossing jokes back and forth. And uh, you always have to just get it right down to the story and um, yeah, it was it was fun seeing the different goblins. You know, you think of goblins, and you always think, well, they're exactly the same, right? But obviously, right. there's a huge contrast between Bongo Billy and Sally. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, I think that was the that's the fun thing about I think the thing about the goblin thing, the whole goblin thing is kind of interesting how they are completely different. You've got the you've got you know Bongo Billy who's completely different than Sally, and then the, then these little these little uh, goblins who are attacking who are what you think of as a goblin just you know random goblin encounters kind of sure. thing. that was interesting yeah lots of fun um well i know that peter usually likes to do people's favorite moments in the episode um to do we have a favorite moment from each of us i mean i think my favorite i think my favorite moment is the uh the is the uh, interaction between um, um, tenacious and the group where they're 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 trying to you know figure out what's going on and he's trying to trying to just tell them you know this is this is how it's going to go and we're gonna this is what we're gonna do and and the you know the line where he you know he says I'm gonna bring you back to life and where she goes and where uh, where Bahati says, "Well, that's you know, that's demonstrably better, or whatever." Yeah, yeah <laughs> objectively <laughs> better. Objectively <laughs> better. Yeah. Right. So I thought that was fun, um, and I love the brandishing of the ladle. Kind of, I don't know. There's something about that that just is funny. And that just tiny ukulele. Yeah. Silly, yeah. Silliness. Yeah. How about you guys, Sarah? I think um, I actually think that it was the bits with the owl, which I know we're giving you a, a bunch of trouble this week, Steve. Um, but I love that we were able to incorporate something new into this episode that we hadn't ever done before. And so, like, to be able to have this transition between the owl into the goblin I thought was was pretty cool like the you know we we keep stepping forward with with tech and production value and all that stuff and so I thought that was kind of a really great way of 
of demonstrating that, right? Is to like just some doing something like extra big that we weren't expecting to do. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, I mean, in the script, I mean, that's the thing is like, I only person to blame would be me because I wrote it, but I can blame Mike. He, he actually DM'd it, um, you know, shape changing. I'm like, okay, so how right. do we manage shape changing, you know, an actor rookie? Yeah. It's like, uh, can you do a transition there? I go, it's, well, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Well, I was thinking of you when I was, there, I was going, I was going to give Steve fits. I was thinking of it um, because I know you so well. I was like, I was thinking, this is going to give Steve fits. I was going to transform into her, into, into Sally. And um, I was wondering what you're going to do there. And that was, that was great. I mean, that was really good. Uh, and it was so good. I mean, she's so good. Uh, that character is such a great character. I mean, I, I think it makes it, it really makes it interesting. I like how she kind of flaps her arms when she's- As she's coming out of it. She's coming out of it. So you, yeah. you, get this, uh, you get this feeling like, oh yeah, she's transforming. Uh, I mean, that was, that was great. And the, the talking owl part is so cool. I mean, I mean, Steve knows I've got a talking owl on my other campaign, but, um, but it's so, it's so So cool. this is a theme for you, yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah, it is. That wasn't lost on me at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's Mr. There's Mr. Owl. So anyway, Mr. Owl. yeah, so, so the, I'm partial to owls anyway, uh, you know, it's just, so it's really kind of a cool thing, uh, that, that whole, that whole interaction. And, you know, the, the character is kind of trying to feel around and being undead and not undead and all that kind of, the whole, that whole piece is very interesting, I think, you know, I, I mean, from, I think from beginning to end, it's all very, it's all very much what we did. It's just some of the lines were changed and some of the things are done differently, which makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, you have to, you, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff there that you have to distill down to a script. So, so it makes it, it makes mm -hmm. it so that just get the best pieces out of it and just try to make sure you get the through line for the story. And, oh, arguably, by the way, arguably one of the funniest lines, at least for me was one that, you didn't role play and I didn't write. It was, it was Anne, of course. She's like, the, the line where he's like, oh, I'm going to bring you back to life. And then she's like, I got to put this line in here because she goes, you brought me back to life. This was series one. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, I'm fine, which I thought was super funny because she's clearly not fine. But it's clearly like, not <laughs> fine. <laughs> but I loved all the reaction of the four, the four heroes looking at each other going, uh, I think I'd rather be a dead than to be like her. Uh, yeah. but I thought that was super funny, and it was a great it was a great ad lib uh, that she yeah. wanted to put in there. I think it's great when those characters, those actors, know the character and uh, what's gone on before, so that those things can come out. I mean, that is a great line, and that was you know it's super funny. It's like I'm just fine. Yeah, I'm just fine. <laughs> Are you though? <laughs> Are you though? You know. And and all the zombie makeup by Bandersnatch looked great. Yeah. Those guys looked awesome. I mean, I thought really that they looked, they looked, you know, ripe, very ripe. Just always yeah, ripe. they looked gross. <laughs> yeah, they did. They were, they were disgusting. Yeah, in, uh, in a good way. Right, right. Um, Steve, we didn't get your favorite moment. I mean, you had a good line that you liked, but did you have other? Well, I'll have to tell you, I really like, I, I, I'm partial to, to sort of undead horror stuff. So I kind of like the, the, the theme of the whole thing. Um, I think a production level thing i didn't probably didn't think it was going to be okay one of the things i can't i, I actually struggle with with in actor is how we're going to handle combat because we can't do huge combat right is, yeah man. and so it's always like well how are we going to handle combat and uh, peter called me over the weekend it's like oh so you know we're playing D and we don't shy away from the fact that we're playing d can you just put the stats on the on the screen and yeah. i'm like just put the stats on the screen like sure <laughs> Yeah, I thought so I decided really to say, hey, wouldn't it be cool? It, so I animated the schools of magic and put those up there. I mean, that's all original stuff. I just sat there and animated over the weekend. And then I said, wouldn't it be really cool? The lower thirds, you know, sort of news thing at the bottom. And it turned yeah. out really, really cool. I was like, okay, I'm really, I think this is, this is pretty nifty. And obviously we're breaking the fourth wall huge. Sure. I think it's just interesting to see what the, with the players. So you're taking your mind off of like, we're not showing somebody actually throw a spell. Right. But, you see the stats there and you, you get a sense of what they're actually doing. I, th I thought that I was actually pretty happy how that turned out. Uh, 
Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. When I saw it, I was like, wow, you got the spell up there and everything. That's impressive. And, uh, and, and even though you're breaking the fourth wall, I think that the, the fun part about that is that brings you back around to the role playing the game and the spells that are being cast. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's that spell. That's the spell they're casting. So that's cool. And it's the, the spell that they have. And spell, you know, the ones well, that, that, that was actually the spells they, they threw yeah, in the yeah. game, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, spell per spell, it's what they use. So that was, I think that was really, that was a great ad. And I, I yeah, I endorse it. On, well, and it's, it. it's nice too, because then you, the, the, the narrator doesn't have to say, Bahati casts this spell, <laughs> you yeah. know, it just shows up and then you can sort of use it that way instead. Um, it's, it's a nice visual reminder without taking us out of the narrative. Right. Yeah, actually, we'd be saying, you know, uh, Schools of Magic is copyright Wizards of the Coast. Thank you very much for allowing us to put your stats on the screen. Thank you very much, Wizards of the Coast. Um, I think that we are not hiding the fact that we are playing D&D 5th edition. So um, th thank you so much for all of that good stuff. Uh, the other thing I really liked was I always I always just really love Tinnell's art. Like, I think yeah, it's big. great. I mean, and there was a lot of it this time. Oh, yeah, and she goes nuts, and uh, you know we're all working hard at our desk trying to get this thing done. And however many days do we do we have to do this? Just not cranking. enough. Yeah, uh, it, her art is always is so it's such a it's such a pleasure. So I always love that email. Here it is. Okay. Here's something all like the that. stuff. She, she doesn't type much. She's always like, here it is, and then I get to go and explore it. So that's yeah, always because her because her hands are dead because she's been going well, nuts. Well, I mean, it's. We have the typically we have the film all done. Peter has it all edited out, everything I've added in my little bits or whatever I'm doing, and then we're sitting there, and then the art comes in. It's the last thing we put in. Yeah. So uh, we're always waiting, like oh, it's going to be exciting. So yeah, it was. Hurts. I mean, I thought it was a great way to do the battles to show those four goblins. She that art of hers was perfect. I mean, you couldn't get you can't get better than that. It was like oh, here they are. That's exactly what they look like. Four yeah, goblins. Like bang, 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 bang. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. The the. Yeah. We, by cool. the way, all of our all of our art for all of our series for series one, two, and now into three, uh, we have it all on our on our website. So if you go to actorokey.com, you're happy to go up there and look at all the different art and see how it's evolved from series one to two. I mean, everything we're doing is evolving. And we, Peter and I have this joke: it's the actoroki way. We don't really care. Peter's mm -hmm. like, I'm just going to have the owl fly across the screen. And if you hate it, guess what? Yeah, then we'll it's take in. it out. <laughs> I go, well, it's the actoroki way. I, you know, it's going to be great. So then yeah. the owl goes right through the screen. I'm like. <laughs> uh, we also have all of our characters from all of the uh, series up on actoroki.com as well. And links to all the episodes, all the previous episodes, should you want to catch up on the lore of Actoroki. Yes. Yeah, so and the other thing we finally got around to doing, because, you know, we're, we're, we're a small team, is we have uh, for series three, we have all the character D&D uh, &D beyond stats all on the website so you know if somebody decides they're going to lose their their, their stats this uh, series you know well <laughs> well then I, I wouldn't name a name but uh you know you can just <laughs> the I, website i wonder who you stats. could be talking about <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> just someone just a person <laughs> just as a hypothetical situation were someone to lose it it would be hard. somebody needs to throw a stone to flesh on peter because he's still not come back to life yeah i think that um we need to get our clerics a work in well well, well, well so so it was interesting a little so a little technical so peter finished r rendering our film tonight and then the gremlins attacked his computer right after that he got it out the door to us and he's like, I'm having the worst time with my computer. I'm going, well, I'm glad you finished the film at least before your system decided to die. And so I was like, are you gonna be able to get in with us and actress Spokey tonight? And he's like, I hope so. And anyway, so he wishes he was here. He loves this part. Listen, uh, we will have him back the next time and he will have double episode worth of stuff to talk about, which will be great. Um, and uh, you know, his computer needs a rest. It was working overtime this past week. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, well we were going to talk about having all three three uh, DMs from a series, like the three series. So Peter started off, and then Sarah came along, and now yep. Mike. Yep. 
So how do you guys see the uh, it evolving from series one to two to three? I know, Mike, you're sort of new um, coming in, so I'm sure there's more, um, uh, Sarah has more insight to this. Well, I mean, Mike, what was your experience coming into an established, not that we're like super established, but at, at the third series, like what was it like for you to come in and be like, here's all the lore go <laughs> it's, it's uh it was a uh, it was it was very much a download by steve on uh here, here's what you need to know here's what's going on the 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 i think the good thing for me is i'm familiar with chaldea having played with peter in chaldea so mm -hmm. so how many he years says, what a, when he says to mine and i'm going yeah i know what that is when he mm -hmm. says when he says you know this we're, we're, we're on the hunt and these guys are the guys who are the guides on the hunt. And I know exactly what that kind of guy is. I cool. don't, if I can say that, because I don't know if we told anyone, but, but in, in any case, I know what that class is that, you know. Uh, the demonologist. Class. Yeah, demonologist. So I know what that is. And I- Made by Marcus you know, Mays, by the way. Excellently. Yeah, yeah, excellently. And so so when all that shows up and they said, you know, then Steve and I are riffing on how to develop the campaign and ideas. And we did that early on. And then then just kind of developing the campaign and everything. I've I've got a familiarity with Chaldea, so that was that makes it easier. And then I was watching uh, other episodes to see how things are progressing and uh mm -hmm. and I, you know. And I thought, and Peter just said, Peter said to me, just, just run your, like, I know how you run a campaign, just run a campaign, just do it, you know, get on do the campaign. Um, and, you know, and we'll go with it. Um, you know, there were some, there are some instructions on not too many characters, you know, you don't want to, you know, you, you've got to, you got to keep things so that they're able to um, take them and film them and make a script and everything. So you don't want to, Get too heavy on lots of different you know things um but uh I think, I think peter would tell us this was the most amount of characters we've ever had in an episode right was it, it absolutely was yes <laughs> all right yeah. well there i go <laughs> I'm famous for that. but uh i i feel like and i feel like you know it was uh i i just feel like uh, i'm really comfortable just doing it i feel like it's just a lot of fun i'm having a great time mm -hmm. um i what i like i think what i like uh, is that, uh, you know, when you get different DMs, you can get different styles and you get to see different styles of DMing. And that's, for me, is always nice. It's always yeah. cool to see how other people do things, how they do combat, how they do, you know, interactions between characters, NPCs, you know, how they set up a scene. Um, mm -hmm. all that, I think all that stuff is always kind of fun. And I think the more, you know, DMs are, more people you have doing it and then you get to see you know different styles i think that's kind of a cool very cool thing yeah for sure um steve i'm interested as of your perspective is that now you have written scripts for three different dms and how is that different for you well i so early on when we first started by the way a little little thing we did a we did a actor rookie play test thing a long time ago to test this out and we brought in mike to be one of our test dummies uh and uh so he, he he's known for a while that we've been working on this crazy idea called actor Oki. and actually he, he created an amazing character in that I mean, arguably the funniest bits in the in the play test was something mike did as as a player not as the dm anyway uh going in you know it's sort of like uh you we, we didn't know what we didn't know uh and so it was like oh you know just just go um, and now after I've not, we're in the series three, I, like I hear when Sarah was DMing and she would say something, I'm like, every word that came, you know, from God's lips to my ears, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, <laughs> okay, I had to write that. I got to, got to illustrate that. I got to sound design that. I got to, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so now when I hear people DM, I used to just be cool balls out. Let's just go epic. And now it's like, whoa, let's not go too epic because I yeah. gotta figure out everybody how to relax a little bit. <laughs> I, well, I mean, in series two, you're like, okay, so I have this plan. They're going to go and fight a Drazzledar. And I'm like, yeah. what? I mean, in, I mean, I don't know if people have figured this out who, who followed series one, two, and three. And 
Drazzledar is sort of like Superman um, in Chaldea. So it's sort of like if you're in D the DC universe going, yeah, we're going to go fight Superman. I'm like, that doesn't seem wise. Um, oh. So when you said that, I'm going to go fight it. But the way you pulled it off was great at the very end. And, <laughs> and they didn't actually have to fight it, which was good because they just no way. Peter said, I would have just stopped, stepped in and said, okay, they're all dead. Um, <laughs> anyway. Everybody's uh, dead I, I now. Suppose, uh, I mean, Peter has it. And Mike said it right, though. Everybody has a different DM style. Um, yeah. And I enjoy watching the RPG from that point of view. Like I sit back and I, I honestly just sit back with popcorn and a Coke and just watch. Nice. I, I take a little bit of mental notes when I hear great lines and the great lines just show straight up in the script. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, I, I think, who was it? Uh, it was Bryce who just said after, well, I'm going to raise you to life. And he just goes, sold. And yeah, then, <laughs> sold. <laughs> And it's like that is objectively better and both of those just went straight in because that's your that's what the response would be right i'm gonna bring you back to life done yeah <laughs> okay boss like what, what's the game plan i mean i put that in but that's like the next thing it's like i'm on board because come on who wants to stay dead nobody yeah. i mean nobody. let's be honest uh, unless you're a necromancer or something anyway uh <laughs> so yeah uh i think though you know enjoying the enjoying people the way they dm and the players play uh thursday morning it's like okay we have a recap meeting you know and okay now we just got to write a script mm -hmm. and so regardless of how the rpg went we kind of have a system uh you know peter's like cannot go over 27 pages i hit page 27 he's like cut all done so, you know, all yeah, done are cutting um and so that's why you know you, you just because you can't just do everything um especially peter you know he films this whole thing in one night you yeah. can realize speed. I said to somebody recently, actor Oki is speed, speed, and capital speed. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. It's pretty wild. So we have a system for the scripts. It, you know, it's a, it's a known quantity now. Um, I can crank. I usually do combat last just because I don't enjoy writing it. It's just hard. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Inevitably, I figure out a way to do it at the end. But uh, yeah. Anyway, well, that's I definitely hard to do without a like a super big budget it's hard to do and and it would be harder also on Tanel if we were like well we'll just do art for all of it because then you've got <laughs> you know you'd need so much well, art from in that. my whole life it's I've always been it doesn't matter what I've done it's like we'll get Steve to do it we'll get like, Steve to do it yeah the person who's really busy what you do is you give them more work so they don't have time to mess with it yeah Peter says that sometimes with a little more colorful language but um yeah yeah we're, we're always just, like we don't want to we're we want to give Tanel more art because obviously we just want to see more art, but we're like, right. at the end of the day, she has to sleep and have a life. Something like that, I guess, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Great. So we're, this is episode one and we have six episodes in yep. the Graver's Dig. Five, five more are coming. Next week, Mike is back at the game table with dice. Yeah. So, Mike, you got anything, any spoilers, any sort of hints? Um, uh, well, um, no, I don't want to give away too much, but, uh, you know, they're going to, they're going to get, they're going to be searching. They need to search. They need to find Brand Skull, and mm -hmm. uh, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to start in on that uh, total, that total, uh, total immersion into, into looking for that, I think, uh, is where we're going to go. Um, it's fun playing with people that we just don't know. Well, almost everyone I play with, I don't know what they, I don't know what they're going to do next. So it's always fun to see that and go off on a, you know, tangent and try to bring them back to some semblance of where you want them to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so I, I always have a good wrangling time. Wrangling cat situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like herding cats. And so it's always fun when they go like, oh, we're going to go do this. And sometimes that works out, which is really kind of fun. It's like they get an idea and then it's like we riff on it and it works out. It's like, oh, that's cool. Um, you know, uh, I think being mindful of time is the biggest thing, you know, you have to do when you're doing uh, the act, when you're doing an RPG in this because in my world, we play for like six hours a night. And it's like, sometimes nothing gets done. Yeah. There is, there, is a, there is so much discussion about the intricacies of what they're going to do. So um, I like that it moves along. And I like we're moving along. Uh, I'll make sure they move along. But we'll see, uh, what the, uh, uh, or we'll see what the players come up with for, 
for uh, for doing that. So, are we going to get to see parts of Chaldea that we haven't gone to before? Um, not uh, not necessarily this next week. Um, okay. I, don't think. I think we're going to be. I think we're going to we're going to stick around the general area. I haven't. Uh, um, I mean, I think uh, it's. I think it's safe to say we we have uh, um, for for. I don't know how it was done in the in you and the other two uh, two series, but um, but Steve and I had an outline that we we um, we decided on from beginning to end. Here's your start point. Here's your end point, mm -hmm. and then we outlined every uh, week. We've got an outline for every week, which we are constantly updating based on what's happened. And we think that this is a good thing to do now because we introduced this character and that's kind of fun. So, um, so we do, you know, so we, we have to get through from to, we got to get from point A to point B in, in, in every session. So, mm -hmm. um, so this session, I think they're going to do a lot of searching and we're going to do some fun stuff with that. Uh, we might meet new characters. We might not. We'll see. Um, but uh, we're gonna. We'll. Uh, uh, we'll definitely have some combat. I can tell you that. I've got a little plan for that. So, um, and uh, we'll see what our heroes, uh, our dead, our dead heroes, undead heroes, can do. Um, so, is uh, we're gonna see any more of uh, Orthy Bob? Um. Yeah, I think she might have to make it another appearance here. This wow, she's amazing. Yeah, I think she I might have to. Um, she uh, she's because they're supposed she's to sneak to... back in to her play. Like that was that one was of the, the instructions. That yeah, told them they to said, do. yeah, he said to go back and see her. So that's what they're probably going to try and do. We'll see how far they get and see if they get back in there and see what's going on. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll uh, we'll get somewhere near there, so we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I, I I'm sure they will. We'll we'll see what else happens along the way, and who else shows up, or what else shows up. So, um, looking forward to it. Uh, I think we're having a I think um, we're going to have a guest uh, player next week as well, because uh, I believe Rennie cannot make the session next week. So. So we're gonna have a guest. He's in the chat right, right now, so we can find Rennie, out. Dude. Rennie calling you out. Where yeah. are you gonna be? That's more important. I think it's gonna be a nice place. Oh, he said something like Hawaii or something. Like, yeah, I think he's. I think he's going to Hawaii. He can't just like modern day technology Zoom call in from you know, drinking a pina colada. Probably he's 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 can. Can. Totally can. You know what? I'm going to revoke his geek card if he oh. can't just dial in and play D&D &D live. Come on. Let's see how it you is. Put a monitor there. <laughs> Rennie's great. I, 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 I we love you, Rennie. Here. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. Um, he, he, he deserves a vacation, so he can have that. We'll, uh, we'll welcome him back. Um, I don't know who's going to play the part uh, for that Arch, Archibald part, but we'll see who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna, who's gonna role play that for one session. Somebody. Um, yeah, somebody. We'll find somebody, I'm sure. We'll get somebody well, feeling they'll do a good job, I'm sure. Some poor schlep's going to have to do it. Well, see, here's the thing. Um, if you get to step in and play a role for one, like, that's when you're most dangerous. Yeah. yeah I was like, I'm only here for one session. <laughs> and then I'm I out. Care. I <laughs> just do whatever I, just I want. Care. <laughs> yeah, you just create something, then Steve Connor puts in the script, and then it's acted out, and now it's too late. It's like you're, you're, you've lost your left arm. Sorry. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> you are not. You have no arm for the rest of the series. <laughs> I hope that's not going to cause a problem for anybody. Well, I don't know. If you, I mean, they're undead. So, like, if somebody was missing an arm, I mean, I don't think it would affect them very much. So, I would not be surprised if there was some form of loss of something well i would just hate it from production value because as soon as i oh, like oh now we have to like remove somebody's arm how are we gonna like green yeah. let them wear a green sleeve and then green we're sleeve the and then you can oh, my Lord. Lord. Yeah. Uh, yes oh, well, i think it, i mean look you can't i don't think you can run an undead campaign without something being lost Steve. i mean it's got to happen eventually something's got to come off 
<laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Somebody is losing a limb. The arp, yeah. the, the yeah, Over the players the are like going, oh, it ain't gonna be me. Fingers, a hand, uh, uh, you know. I don't think I'll be so 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 evil as to have someone lose a leg, but but, uh, but, but uh, maybe. <laughs> right. Let maybe. the dice decide. Make a yeah, charge. Let the dice make decide a roll. What happens? Um, but I think eventually, you know, it's just gotta something's gotta happen. Mm -hmm. um, For sure. It would be fun to have a character without any arms. Zero arms. The Walking Dead, didn't they do that? Yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm sure. I feel like well, they do. They do something like that in most most zombie yeah, centric films. Some, something happens. There's always well, something. the 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 Orthy Vub uh, monologue she did talking to the skull. One of the last lines in there because we trailed it off. It was really long because she was crazy. But she says there's nothing sadder and more pathetic than a zombie with no arms. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. So there you go. We'll, we'll have to uh, see if we can work it in. Well, yeah. Peter didn't join us. He was here in heart and soul, but, you know, sure. um, he's probably out having a glass of wine or something at this point. Anyway, Peter, get your computer fixed. Join us next time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, before we go, could everybody tell us where we can find you on socials? Mike, where can we find you on socials? Uh, I think I'm Mike, I think I'm mboozer42, so you can find me there. Um, I also work for Gen Con, so you can always uh, you can always find me at Gen Con if you want to uh, get a hold of me. Um, um, so. That's mboozer42 on Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Thanks. You're welcome. If you wanted, by the way, we have. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so social media oriented. That's out. okay. Um, Steve, I don't think you are on any socials. You are a ghost. I, I am not, but you can get a hold of me at sconnard at uh, worldofcaldia.com. Feel World free to email me, and I live on email, so I'll email you back. It's same. true. He does at he any does. time of the day. Go get him. Yeah. Um, you can also find us at all of our socials for World of Chaldea are at World of Chaldea, or you can yeah. find us on our website, worldofchaldea.com or actoroki.com. Uh, we stream from twitch.tv slash GenCon TV every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific. Next week, a week from today, we are going to be streaming the next RPG session, which is RPG session number two, live from the studio. Minus um, Rennie. Minus Rennie, but with someone else, or maybe not. Maybe it'll be a zombie. We don't know what's going to happen. Something. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm Sarah Moore. You can find me on Facebook at Actor Sarah Moore. You can find me on Instagram and Ko-Fi and Twitter and TikTok at Pixies and Pins. Uh, you can find me every Friday night right here on Gen Con TV uh, for Sarah's Table at 5 p.m. Pacific. This week, we are playing an episode of Lady Blackbird by John Harper. So that should be really fun. Uh, yeah, listen, uh, this show just keeps getting bigger and weirder and better. So you need to come back here and check out what Mike is going to lead everybody through next week um i'd like to give a big shout out to jimmy duffy thank you very much um from yes. producer Thanks, Jax for for running the stream tonight um thank you to zombie orpheus for doing the tech for the shoot thank you to um Bandersnatch studios for doing all of the zombie makeup I want to thank everybody for watching at home and joining us as we are chatting um the chat was pretty active it was very cool to see you guys in there um I don't know that we have anybody else to thank. I mean, aside from our wonderful players and our excellent Tanel. actors. Tanel for all of the amazing art. You should go check out um, all of the art that we have posted on our website. Again, we're dropping that website, worldofcaldia.com. Go check it out. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think that's all of it. Steve, can you think of anything else that we need to bring up? I think we need to bring the magic next week, Mike. Magic, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll bring the magic next week. You've been uh, charged. We'll yeah, we're gonna have some fun uh, with the with the poor players that are gonna see. We're gonna see where they're going next. I believe in you and uh, and the chaos that you shall bring to the table. <laughs> Looking forward to chaos. Um, good night and good gaming, huh? Yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And as always, keep making art and keep being art. We will see you next time. Good evening. Good night. Bye. Bye.
Yes.